Hey guys, I'm Alex. I'm Joe. And this is Rig Walk Around Episode 1 with the 2019 Jeep JLUR. Okay, Alex, why did you want to get a Jeep? Well, I've been off roading all my life, and uh, it's always been on quads or a small side by side, small two door Jeeps that my family's always had. And now that I've gotten older and have a family, I need something a little bigger and a little bit more comfortable. And uh, this is what I use as a daily driver and to go rock crawling or uh, explore the mountains up in Lone Pine or wherever it needs to take me. That's it's awesome that you include your family in your um, pastime. Having said that, you have two small boys. How do they get along being on, a tra on the trail for such a long time? It takes time. They really like to see uh, going up mountains is their thing, right? They want to, they're always excited. We're gonna climb that mountain. We're gonna climb that mountain. And sometimes it can be a little extreme. My small one, he is a wild thing, and he's like, let's climb up the biggest one we can find. It could be the most treacherous thing, and he'll be seated in, the, in his car seat the entire time. My, my older one, he's a little bit more timid, and he's like, I'm good with just the dirt roads and <laughs> rock crawling, but not so much you know, climbing steep inclines or getting uh, stuck up on obstacles. He doesn't like all the noise and the creaking. So, but when on a long trip, you know, if they have their tablets or they have conversations with us, we try and play road games. They have, we try and keep them busy and entertained. But once we're on trail, they're all about being on the trail. And if they can get out, walk around, climb on the rocks and watch that from afar, they're happy to do that too. So Preston is the thrill seeker. Preston is the thrill seeker, big time. Cool. Okay, Alex, tell us a little bit about your, your bumper here. So it's a rough country bumper that uh, modified on the second day I owned the Jeep. Um, it was a full length bumper that me and you in your garage, we actually cut off the ends and made end caps. And so make why did we do that? Well, we were having tire stuffing issues. Mm -hmm. So even with 35s, with a full length bumper, we were having issues with the, the tires hitting the bumper and we needed, we needed more room, especially since I was planning to go 37 shortly after. Well, it was an economic way of, of creating a stubby without just throwing money at the problem. Yeah, and I really do like the style of this bumper where the winch is recessed in and still has all the cooling to the radiator, not blocking it. It's got the nice fair lead um, and it's got the nice synthetic rope on it. And why why change something you like when you can just modify it to make it fit your needs? Right. So the 8,000 pound has been plenty. Well, it's a 10,000. Okay. It's just the 8,000 model. So but the 10,000 pound has been plenty for me. The other time we need to use the winch uh, we just recently was on Dishpan Springs. Uh, it was near the end of the trail. I want to say it was the third major obstacle mm. and it was jammed up in some rocks. You know, we had a few others with us and um, we thought we found the line. I was, I was right there to making it and the back end just slipped and instead of trying to keep, you know, backing out and trying again, we just put a line on it and dragged, dragged me out of the spot. Well, all of us had to winch that day on that particular spot, and it was just a matter of us not knowing that obstacle. Yeah, I Looking think, at other YouTube videos, there's definitely a line there to get through there without winching. Yeah, I think if we go back, and I'm sure we will, we'll, we'll know exactly what to do and how to tackle it, depending on what the rain's done to that For trail. sure. And lighting, what do we have here as far as lighting? Okay, so nothing special in lighting. I just have the standard um, Jeep headlights and fog lights. The only thing that's really changed in the front wheel lighting has been in the fenders, is with the barricade fenders. It's funny because the fender lights are actually brighter than the factory headlights. Yes, they are. <laughs> I can verify that. Yep. And the other thing I have on the front is uh, this bolt headlock, and it, it locks the hood. Okay. So you can't just pop the sides and take it off. It actually is a really tight fit with that thing locked. Like, even if you pop the sides, there's no way to pry the front of it without having the key and it's actually keyed to your jeep key nice uh, i'm assuming that you're going down the freeway in windy conditions your hood's not fluttering like other jeeps are it does not flutter at all nice keeps it nice and tight and what do you have for steering components underneath this jeep so i went with a rpm tie rod uh, combined with a redneck ram i also have the rpm drag link uh, I've been pretty happy with the combos. I know people have issues with braking and snapping tie rods. I have extras, just in case. Um, I have not snapped one, but I have bent a couple. But other than, uh, other than that, 
the the tie rod itself has been really stout. Smashed it against rocks, land put the whole weight of the Jeep on it, and it hasn't, it won't bend. Uh, the Redneck Rands are really nice. You know, it's a, it's a cheaper option than going with a full, full PSC system. Um, it tightens up the steering, or it slows down the steering a little bit in the Jeep. And it gives me that little bit extra I need when you have your lockers on in the front, just to be able to churn the rocks. Now it's not perfect, right? Sometimes it's still hard to churn. Not like the full PSC system where you can move a boulder with your tire, but you have other issues with that too. Yeah. And to be fair to, to RPM, they've come out with a new uh, style of tie rod end that doesn't seem to be snapping nearly as much, or and definitely not bending. Yeah, it's the it's the Apex steel ones. Correct? Yes, Apex. Okay, um, axles. Anything done to the axles? So for the axles, they're a stock Jeep axle. Um, the only thing we've added are the lower control arm skids from Arctec. They're well done. I have a DV8 uh, skid plate in the front and a Revolution Gear front diff cover. Nice, have you ever had any issues with the stock uh, diff covers leaking or cracking on you? The only reason I replaced them is because I peeled the front of it. I was coming uh, down a rock and I just barely nicked the edge of a rock and it peeled the front and I had uh, gear oil leaking all over the trail. All right, Alex, tell us a little bit about this uh, Rebel Recon suspension system you have on your Jeep. So I really like the Rebel Recon kit. Uh, the adjustability with the adjustable reservoirs and the flex you get out of it, the, the droop, I really don't think there's anything that compares on the market. Um, I've seen a lot of other systems, the Metal Cloaks, the Fox 2.5s, and they just aren't the same. When I got this lift put on it, I had another lift previous. It was a Terraflex sports kit. I know it's like apples to oranges, not the same, but it completely changed the ride of the entire Jeep. Um, it's not a cheap kit, but if you can afford it, I would say do it every single time. If I had to do it again, I would do it again. Yeah, I gotta agree. Tr spending you know money on three different lift kits on the same Jeep because you weren't sure what you were doing the first time is not a very efficient way of of installing a lift on a Jeep. And what about your control arms and your control arm brackets? What do you got there? So using uh, the Terraflex Alpine IRs. Okay. The reason I went through the I bars has a lifetime bushing. It's a little bit more expensive than their standard control arm, but I figured if the bushing was gonna go out, I wouldn't have to shell out another 600 bucks for bushings to replace them. If they did go out, they'd be under warranty. I just have to get them replaced. Uh, I also have it combined with a Metal Cloak DB3 bracket. Now, I've been wanting long arms, but the price for a long arm on a JL is a little high. I did the next best thing to try and flatten out my control arms, those are the DB3 brackets. Just like the suspension, how it changed the Jeep, the DB3 brackets did the same thing. You know, it's a much smoother ride on the road, even on the rocks, or if you're flying down a trail, it doesn't feel as jarring. And I would probably do it, do it again. Well, long arms is a lot of work because most long arm systems are well done and you, it involves dropping your fuel tank and cutting off stock brackets. The DB3s lessen the angle on the control arm so it's not transferring all that vibration into the cab and making the, the ride much smoother. You know, and I've had a lot of people tell me, you're gonna catch rocks on that. Well, it's gonna be the same thing with a long arm kit. You know, they stick down, I think, just as far. Maybe the DB3 brackets are a little longer but it's been such a more comfortable ride with the DB3s installed. Alex, tell us about the Cooper STT Pros that you've got here. So I am running a 37 by 1350 SST Pro. I like the wider stance of the 1350s. It's a little unique. The tire is a little heavier, but when you compare it to the 1250, it really, that one inch really does make a difference. How's the noise on the, on the freeway? They can be pretty loud. Brand new, they're pretty quiet, but after a while... They get pretty slappy, they don't they? get pretty slappy. If no issues with split side roll walls or balancing, any of that? Balancing, no. And the split side walls, I haven't had that experience. And they're wrapped in a fuel rim. Um, they're not bead locks, but for me, I don't really want to roll with bead locks. For me, it's more of a convenience thing, being able to go to any tire shop and have them mounted and balanced. Um, the next thing with, with bead locks for me, it's just looks like a lot of work. <laughs> it, they are a lot of work. Yeah. Um, tell us about the graphics kit you put on. So the graphics kit is not anything special. It is an Amazon kit you can get. It's just vinyl? 
it's just a vinyl. Um, the, the work that's required to put on a vinyl kit, I had no idea until I got it. There's a lot of pieces to this. It's a lot of little pieces and that's exactly how it came was, here's some pieces, figure out how to put it on. Wow. And you're sitting there cutting them off, gotta make sure the Jeep is spotless to put everything on. I had my brother come over and it still took us close to six hours to wrap. Well, it looks sides. awesome. It yeah. definitely changed the look of the Jeep. You know, and they're, they're holding up pretty well. I'm coming up on uh, two years of being on the Jeep. Yeah, they look good. Yeah, I'm a little concerned with paint fade behind the sticker, but I don't really plan on taking it off. I really like the look. You don't see a lot of them on the road. I know I have seen some other sticker kits on different colors, but I really like the black and the mojito. I think it comes out really nice. Yeah, you guys did a great job putting those on. And uh, rock rails, what we got there? So I have the LOD rock rails. They're weld onto the frame. I did buy them secondhand and they had a different welding bracket on. So they're not perfect as far as lining up with everything, but they work really well. I've had the entire weight of the Jeep on it to pivot around a rock and it's not rolling into the body. As before, I just had the Rubicon rock rails and there's too many times where I can, I know it's rolled in the body and I do have damage on the body from the rock rails rolling in. Yeah, it's cheap insurance to get a rock rail that keeps the body off of the rocks. I mean, the, the Rubicon rails are one thing, but they're, they're very minimal. This is way better. Yeah, but man, the, uh, they are not light. It took both of us to lift them in place just to get them welded right. I remember. <laughs> what about gearing, Alex? Is it stock gears or did you regear it? I just recently regeared to 488s, a uh, Revolution gear set. Uh, it's really helped improve the mileage and really get back my eighth gear. I stayed, I stayed on Rubicon 410s for the longest time just because, you know, it's another expense. You have to be without your Jeep. And for me, my Jeep's my daily driver. So being without it for a few days just doesn't really work for me. Um, but we did find some time. I had Bent Motorsports do the rear gear on the front and rear with 488s. And it drives really nice, really smooth. The biggest change I noticed was off-road. Right. Once I put it in four low and I was in first gear, I really wasn't on the gas pedal as much as before, especially with rolling around on the heavy 37s. On the free, are you seeing, are you seeing eighth gear more now or about the same? It, I'm seeing eighth gear quite a bit more and my mileage has increased up to about 17 to 18 miles of the gallon. And how is the power, has the power improved since the re-gear? I think the power range has improved overall through all, all the sets of gear. I mean, it is the 2.0 turbo with e-torque and I've always thought this little motor has been fast and it, it, even with 37s, it's still pretty quick off the line. Yeah, it is quick. Jeep. Alex, tell us about your tire carrier you have here. So I have the DV8 rear tire carrier that can carry up to a 40 inch tire. It's steel, it's heavy, and I'm not a fan. I definitely have buyer's remorse. Ooh. I like the style carrier. I like the look of it. It's a little different than the Genrite but man, it is so heavy. <laughs> when you say buyer's remorse, we're not here to beat anybody up, no. but we wanna be honest in our opinions of stuff. Why do you have buyer's remorse? What's, what's the issue? What are you comparing it to? Oh, I'm comparing it to a Genrite tire carrier of the same type that gets it off of the, the bumper or off the tailgate. Um, being so heavy and the locking mechanism, I think the locking mechanism really has a lot to be desired for. If they can improve on that, I think it would be great. But stock as it is, it rattles, it jumps. My wife had a really hard time operating this. It's a, it's a spring pin and she had a really hard time pulling against those springs and getting them locked into place. So much so she stopped driving the Jeep. She didn't, she, hated going to get groceries or having to open up the bag in the Jeep because she couldn't operate the tire carrier. So I had to modify it so that she can use it. Now I just use a carriage bolt and a tractor pin that she can actually operate. Other than that, I like the tire carrier, I really do. The only thing that isn't, I think, manufactured very well is the way they do the locking mechanism. So the Generite one is all aluminum, super lightweight, mm -hmm. same you know, you can run a 40 inch tire in there. Um, it's locking mechanism is two pins that you just pull. You keep them lubed up and they pull right out. 
Um, I think we both know that the Generite one does not rattle, does not squeak, does not jump. Yeah. Um, so yeah. if you had to do it all over again, to, you'd have to spend the extra money, but which one would you buy? If they improved the locking mechanism and made it more like the Generite one, I would probably still stick with the Deviate one. For one, the cost. Obviously the steel's a little bit cheaper than aluminum and it's a different style. And like I said, I really like the style of the, of the Deviate. The, my biggest sticking point is the locking mechanism. But if they stick with the same locking mechanism, I would go with the Genrite. I'd spend the extra money. Yeah, before this you had a, like a tailgate mounted tire carrier, right? I had a tailgate mounted tire carrier from Rough Country and we were on a trail up in Big Bear doing Rattlesnake to Pioneer Town. Mm -hmm. And you get the, on those washboard roads and over time it just starts bouncing and it ripped right, the tire ripped right off of the tailgate mount. Wow. So we ended up taking the tire off and putting it in one of our friend's Jeeps and I had no choice but to replace it. And I didn't want another rattly tailgate mounted rough country one. And I wanted a tire carrier that was like the Genrite, but I couldn't afford the Genrite. Now, a lot of people will get rid of tire carriers in the back and just throw their spare tire in the back, but that's not really an option for you because of the size of your family and what you need to carry, right? Yeah, for me, I, I, need a, I need that extra space in the back. I carry a fridge with me, I carry tools with me, I carry parts, uh, and I have to have that room in the back. And my family wants to come, it's not like I can just remove the rear seat, right? I have to have that extra room. Right, and that's just on a normal trail day. I mean, if you guys were ever to go camping, I mean, you would need as much interior room as possible. Yeah, so carrying the tire inside was never an option for me. So the bumper, I have a rough country bumper. It came with the Jeep when I bought it. Um, I really am okay with the steel rough country bumper. It doesn't rattle. It did have a tailgate cat carrier like we were talking about, but that is now long gone. Another reason I like it, it has an integrated hitch. I don't have to add a hitch to the bottom of the frame of the Jeep. And we take our, our boats to the river using the Jeep or we'll take it to San Diego Bay. And it's really convenient that way. Now I had had thoughts of changing the bumper, but my needs for having the integrated hitch really have prevented me from wanting to do anything else. It does have its issues. I've come down really hard on some rocks and I've bent the bumper. And I've hit so hard before that it's actually hit the body and I have some body damage from the bumper. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with the rough country bumper. Yeah, but that's not um, exclusive to rough country bumpers that do that. There's plenty of other manufacturers whose bumpers will come up and hit the body in the corners on a hard hit like that. So it's just, uh, I think it's some of the tolerances around the edges of the Jeep are too tight. Alex, tell us about the favorite mod that you've done to your Jeep so far. My most favorite mod has been the Recon, Recon Coilover Kit. Okay, why? Why is that your favorite? It's changed the attitude of the Jeep. You know, it doesn't drive like a regular spring and shock. Uh, the way it droops and grabs the rocks when you really need it to, you can rely on it to be there. And there, I think there's something to be said for being able to walk out your driveway and adjust your lift from four and a half inches to eight inches if you need to. Yeah, You that's... can run anything from 35s to 42 inch tires on, the, on a recon coilover kit. And having a recon coilover kit and the adjustability of being able to walk out to your driveway and go from a four and a half inch lift to an eight inch lift and being able to run 35 inch tires to 42 inch tires is pretty cool too. Yeah, that's a really nice feature. Another thing you can do is you can change out the spring rates or change your timing to go from single rate to dual rate whenever you want. You don't have to change your entire lift setup. What's the stickiest situation that you've been in on this Jeep? So it's gonna to have to be Devil's Canyon. Devil's Canyon is a really difficult trail. And I thought I was doing great. I thought I was unstoppable on that trail. I thought I built it to where it can handle anything. And that trail taught me a lesson. Uh, I got my tire under bind and I couldn't back up. I couldn't go forward. And I snapped an axle shaft like it was no one's business. Pieces flying everywhere, hitting my arm. I remember you getting hit by something. You're like, I don't, what was that? Well, no idea. And we made the mistake. We didn't know that we broke the axle shaft in the t at the time. And we kept rolling forward and we broke the lower ball joint and the entire tire assembly came off the axle. 
and we didn't know if we we're gonna get off trail that day. Yeah, that was a challenging day for sure, but I would not trade that experience for anything in the world. No, that was that was awesome. What's the next mod? What are we doing next? I think the next thing I want to do is either going to be a DSS kit from Rebel, or if I can save up enough money and do one ton axles. What's your favorite trail to go run? My favorite trail, if I have to go on a Saturday, just out of the blue, I'd always go to Sidewinder and Coral Canyon. It offers a little bit of everything, a little bit of nice scenic area, some rock crawling. And if you wanted to take a few friends, the trail is big enough for five to six Jeeps. If I have a long weekend, I'm going to Utah. Nice. Big time. San Hollow is like Coral Canyon on drugs. <laughs> Favorite trail in the San Hollow? Milt Smile. Milt Smile. I agree. Very so chilling, long. It's longer than a mile. <laughs> but it was a fantastic time when we were there. Bucket list trail. Trail you have to do before you leave this earth. I have to go do four dice. Have to go conquer four dice. Haven't been to the Rubicon yet. But looking at the videos about on four dice, I want to go experience that area. I think we need to make that one happen. Are you are you uh, airing up with uh, air compressor or a CO2 bottle? Is an air compressor. Like the idea of having the air compressor always on me and not worrying about running out of air. All right, tell us about your sport cage you have. It's a rock hard four x four sport sports cage. It's a bolt on mod. So no welding required. I really do think it adds to the safety of having a rollover, especially in the uh, rock crawling aspect that I do on this Jeep. So I have your standard first aid kit. It's an AFAT kit. I carry a DeWalt impact with a spare battery. I have impact sockets. I try and carry uh, the necessary wrenches I need to work on the Jeep. I also keep tie rod ends. I have axle shafts. As far as comms and radios, what do we have here? I, I use the GMRS handheld, but my main source of communication is the ham radio. I have it mounted inside of my glove box, and the antenna is mounted on the back by the tire carry. So it doesn't appear overbearing or it's in the sight or in your in your leg space. Um, I really like my hard-mounted hard mounted radio. I don't have to worry about charging batteries, and I always have access to repeaters if I need them. Especially when you go into areas and you don't have cell service, you need to get a hold of emergency services. That's a really good way to get access to that. Yeah, your hard mount radio is 80 watts output, and you can really reach out and touch somebody if you need to. On a clear day, it goes real far, real clear. Hey guys, just remember I'm Joe. I'm Alex. And this is Rig Walkarounds Only. Please like, subscribe, and share the video, and stay tuned for episode two.